Good morning, afternoon, evening, night. Whenever you're watching this, Geographers, welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today, we're going to be going into a very exciting topic. That's right, the one you've all been waiting for, Unit 6, Topic 7. It's infrastructure, people. Woo! All right, calm down, calm down. I realize infrastructure is pretty exciting. But before we get into infrastructure, make sure you smash that subscribe button and also that like button. It helps support the YouTube channel and it makes sure you don't miss out on these exciting topic review videos. And with that, cringy intro, let's get on to learning about some infrastructure. So geographers, when you hear the term infrastructure, what I want you to think about is the electrical grid, public transportation, water and sewage systems, education, hospitals, police, fire department, bridges, cell towers, communication systems, the internet, highways, interstates, roads, airports, railways, or ports. Now, if you can't tell yet, infrastructure is pretty important. It allows us to be able to have a high standard of living and be able to do our day-to-day -day functions. It's the very fabric of society, literally the foundation that holds it up. Over time, we have seen countries and cities' infrastructure continue to advance and develop. This has changed the spatial layout of not only cities, but society as a whole. For example, it used to be very common that we had large retail locations in a city CBD. Now, however, we're seeing smaller stores located in the suburbs, boom burbs, and edge cities. Thanks to advancements in highways, roads, and also the internet, people can travel farther distances. They can shop from their own homes. All of this has changed where we live and shop and interact with different people in our society. These changes are going to continue to keep happening. As more people are working from home, shopping from from home, even going to school at home. This is changing the spatial layout of our society. Not just the location of businesses, goods and services, but also where we live. And this is all putting new strain on our infrastructure. One example of that is just the internet. In 2020, the world went to online learning. We saw people shift into working from home and we started to see more people shop online. COVID-19 reshaped society and this put a new strain on the internet for local communities. Cities had to now figure out, well, how are we going to be able to make sure that students have access to the internet? Even for my school, when we first switched over to online learning, YouTube went down, Google Classroom wasn't working, and that's because the system couldn't handle all these people signing on at once. People now were working from home, gaming from home, shopping from home, and going to school from home. And all of a sudden, houses had seven people trying to access the internet. People needed to upgrade their infrastructure. We needed better bandwidth, faster internet speeds to allow for this transition to occur. And now that it's started to happen even faster, it'll be interesting to see what continues to happen to society. Will more and more people continue to work from home and shop from home? Will online school become more popular? If it does, we're going to have to change our infrastructure in order to better support it. And as societies continue to develop and advance, not only will they run into problems with the infrastructure and their internet, they'll also continue to see their infrastructure that they have be used. And as it ages, new upgrades will be needed in order for the system to continue to work as it was intended. And unfortunately, upgrading and maintaining infrastructure is extremely expensive. But if not done, the results can be catastrophic. When infrastructure fails, it not only disrupts the day-to-day -day life of all citizens in society, it can sometimes even lead to death. Questions on where infrastructure projects should happen, who's going to pay for the infrastructure, and also how it should be completed are often left to local political organizations. The city, the county, or even the state are the ones that often determine the funds. But we also have infrastructure projects that happen at the federal level as well. Now, besides making repairs and upgrades to old infrastructure, society also needs to create new infrastructure to accommodate a changing population and an ever-changing society. Roads may need to be reconfigured to accommodate the new cars that are driving on them, or public transportation might be needed in order to connect highly densely populated areas to other parts of the city, or even just to alleviate the traffic concerns on the roads. Cities today invest in the internet's infrastructure to make sure citizens and their businesses can connect to the web quickly and consistently. As populations continue to grow, cities will have to expand their health, education, water, electric, trash, sewer, all of these services will need to be improved in order to accommodate the new population that is residing within the city's limits. And if cities fail to grow their infrastructure with their residents,
residents, they risk deteriorating road systems, traffic problems, overcrowded schools and hospitals, a police and fire force that are stretched too thin and can't support everyone, or an electric grid that might fail. This would end up pushing residents out of a city or a geographic area and could even cause brain drain to occur. At the end of the day, cities that continue to maintain and improve their infrastructure and also advance it will maintain a high standard of living for their residents. They'll offer more economic and social opportunities for people, which will motivate people to move to the city. And cities that continue to neglect their infrastructure will run into more problems. They're more likely to have large structural issues, which will push people out of their city. And they'll slowly possibly be at risk for brain drain and other societal issues that could cause problems for the city in the long run. Hopefully now you see just the importance of infrastructure. And while it might not be the most exciting topic, it has major implications for our lives. After you're done watching this video, go look at your own city. What is your city investing in? Do you have well-maintained roads, healthcare, education, internet, all these different services? Or is your city neglecting them? And how could that create issues for your city or opportunities in the future? And while you're doing that, don't forget to answer our review questions for this video. You can find them on the screen right now. And of course, when you're answering them, check your answers in the comments below. And make sure you hit that subscribe button and like the video. And if you do need a little bit more help with this unit or anything with AP Human Geography, check out my Ultimate Review Packet. It's a great resource. It covers all the units, and you can find a link to it in the description of this video. As always, thank you so much, geographers, for the support and watching the video. I'm Mr. Sin, and in until next time, I'll see you guys online.